Hey, 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 everybody. It is time for another episode of the Salon Scoop. Today is a digital debrief episode with the one and only Sarah Perrin. Sarah, what is going on? Oh, living the dream, Scott. What's going on with you? Uh, uh, I'm trying to live vicariously through you. <laughs> I was going to say, could you hear the sarcasm dripping from that? I just mean, if you're, if, I'm, you're I'm living, if you're living the dream, I'm just going to hang on to your coattails. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, today we are going to get the scoop on captions and hashtags when it comes to social media, kind of these complementary aspects that often kind of get overlooked, right? We put just very little time and attention into those because we're focused on the actual image and the videos and whatnot. But captions especially can be extremely, extremely important because that's really, I mean, the word says it itself, it's a caption because it captures the attention, it captivates right, our readers. And while the image is really going to, to sort of trigger them to stop, right, and take the time to focus on your post, what you write in your caption is actually what's going to, you know, trigger an interest in, you know, you as an individual or your company, whatever it is that you're talking about. So spending some time to really make sure that you are engaging with the caption a little bit some storytelling can be can be excellent um is critical so sarah i'm gonna pass the uh, pass the mic over to you to give people some insights into how to make captions a little bit more powerful and maybe walk through some examples of different ways that you can utilize captions yeah absolutely i can do that so I find with the, you know, with the salon industry and hairstylists and, you know, estheticians, everything like that, often there is so much focus on the actual photo um, and the content that's being put out, which is equally as important. But then you'll see this, you know, beautiful blonde and you scroll a little bit and it's, you know, iced vanilla latte or light blonde roast. It's always some type of dessert or coffee explanation, right? Where it's like, oh, this is what this looks like. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. We're all guilty of it. We've all done it. But like the days of that are kind of gone. Like people don't really care what type of iced beverage your hair, you know, that you're putting out looks like anymore. Right. So that is what we would call an explanatory caption, um, like, or like an informative one kind of thing. You're not really educating you're not really doing anything like that you're just simply stating what the photo is right or pretty blonde balayage I did yesterday that's not really telling a story it's just people can look at the photo and get that from it right so the way that I always look at it is you want your captions to be inspiring educational promotional or engaging so I'm going to kind of give you some examples of what that would look like on the same photo. Obviously, this is a podcast and you're listening. So just picture um, I'm using an example of a client that comes to our salon regularly and she gets a different shade of pink in her hair every time. So just picture, you know, gorgeous pink hair. And that's all you need to worry about. That's the picture that we're talking about. Right. I'm closing so, my eyes. I'm visualizing you, right now. You're in, you're in, Yes, perfect. And if you check out the blog post, there is the actual photo that you can kind of see and everything like that. But just for, you know, listening sake, I'm just going to kind of break it down like this. So for that photo, if you were just doing a basic explanatory caption, it might sound like pretty in pink with some pink emojis, right? Not really telling a story. It is it's pretty in pink, but like you're not really getting anything from it, right? An example of an inspiring caption might sound like this. This lovely lady is absolutely obsessed with pink. Every time she visits the salon, she has her hair done in a different shade of pink. Her nails, her accessories, her makeup are always beaming with bursts of soft, bright, neon, or pastel pink. The color pink represents love, kindness, and approachability, and this is the vibe she puts out as soon as she steps in the salon. It brightens my day every time she sit and sits in my chair and shares her sunny, vibrant, pink energy with me. Not only is she an absolute joy to work with, but I also have the opportunity to be creative and turn her pink hair dreams into reality. Cool. We learned a story. We learned a little bit about the client and how it gets, you know, the stylist excited and everything like that. So that's like an inspiring post. You can tell a story about your guest or, you know, why this specific service was exciting for you to complete. Yeah. And it's intriguing. Like people always like to get insights into, you know, other people and their, um, you know, their desires and everything. I, I love that. I was listening to, to understand, you know, what, <laughs> what motivated her. 
And, and it's actually really interesting because I'm talking about a real client, like I'm referencing someone real. And this, this girl, you go on her social media, like you go on her Instagram and everything is pink. It is so cool. Like I'm like, and again, every time she comes in, she's got a cool new pink jacket on or a cool new pink accessory. Like I'm like, it is a real cool thing. And like a lot of us have talked about it before too. So again, just kind of sharing that with your followers that, you know, there's kind of a story behind this as well. So we've covered explanatory, we've covered inspiring. So another one would be educational. Um, so I'm just going to give you kind of a breakdown on what that could look like. Here's how we created this dusty lavender kissed pink. First, we pre-lightened with Evo Pro Bottle Blonde Lightener and 20 Ball Plus Olaplex. Then we pre-toned with Evo Pla Platinum Shampoo. Next up, application. Crown formula, yada, yada, yada. So what this caption is doing is literally breaking down like the formula that was used and the entire process, what it looked like. So that's educational, not only to the guests, but also to other stylists as well. Um, so kind of depending on who your target audience is on social media, this might look a little bit different. So if you're specifically trying to educate guests coming in for this appointment, you might say, you know, pastel hair is beautiful but it is a very high maintenance service this is what we would suggest to get the most out of your pastel hair color and make it last as long as it needs to whereas if you're wanting to educate other stylists or other people in the industry that's where you could kind of get into you know like these are the formulas we used this is the step-by-step -step process yeah so uh, with consumers it's more the you know the retail products that you're going to focus yeah. on with stylists it might be more the actual color formulas exactly so ju again just educating you know, leaving them with a little bit more knowledge than they, you know, started with kind of thing. So um, an example of a promotional um, caption would be, ooh, this pink would look so good on you. Have you ever wanted to try a vivid or pastel color but are afraid of the maintenance? Keep scrolling. You won't want to miss this month's offer at the salon. For the rest of the month, you will receive a free color condition conditioner with any fashion color service. So not only are you getting the fashion color of your dreams, but you're also getting the secret ingredient to keeping your color fresh and vibrant for free. It's um, This is the time for you to book in for your own vibrant or pastel hair color. Cool. So took that picture and promote it to other people so it is a little bit more of like a salesy kind of thing like this is what we were able to do we can do the same thing for you at this deal that we have going on this month so again incorporating you know monthly promos anything like that that's going on yeah and then engaging so this is where you really want to like you're working with calls to action you want people to be you know commenting liking engaging in any way kind of shape or form so an example of an engaging caption for this photo would be we absolutely love this pinky purple masterpiece but we can't put our finger on what it reminds us of help us out by telling um, us what this color combo reminds you of in the comments on a side note if you could do your hair in any pastel color what would you choose so, you know what I mean? You've asked multiple questions. They're also kind of excited, like, cool, I can help name this, you know, hair color that you created. And there's different options for, like, there's different calls to action. Let us know what you think in the comments. Like, you're really, again, putting a call to action in that, in that caption. Love it. Yeah, people, people like that. And sometimes, you know what, if you find that it's, it's not working to ask them to like name it, then you could put like two or three names and say, tell us which one you prefer. And you're actually, you're giving them the options. And they just have to choose, you know, the one that they like the most, like totally. uh, but pe people like to, you know, vote on things and, and sort of contribute. So it's a great way to get, to get engagement um, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So hopefully that was a good enough breakdown of like what these types of captions can look like and even just listening to them. Obviously, there's ones that, you know, kind of piqued your interest more than others. And but I would say 90 percent of the time, what caption you're seeing on social media is that pretty in pink. You know what I mean? So just kind of, you know, just shows what types of, you know, emotions and feelings are invoked um, when you're actually putting a little bit more effort into that caption. Uh, which is so critical because that's what gets the, you know, the reader, the person who's scrolling to actually stay on your post. And for those that, you know, get frustrated by the Instagram algorithm, uh, let me tell you something really, really straightforward here. The Instagram algorithm, all that it is, is it's going to show content that people are spending more time looking at. That's it. Instagram wants people to st spend more time on Instagram. So if you have a post that can actually get people to spend more time looking at your post, 
then Instagram is going to show that post to more people. So just having, you know, a pretty in pink is not really keeping people on your post for a while. But if you're able to put a nice caption that, you know, is following one of those examples that Sarah just shared with us, now people are spending the time to read it. They're kind of really getting a little bit more deeply involved in your post. They might end up, you know, writing, you know, a message in the comment. All of those things are going to help you positively in the Instagram algorithm and get you more visibility over time with your posts. So that's where this is really, really important. Last little comment on the captions is make sure that you always have some kind of, you know, call to action. So Sarah mentioned, you know, write us in the comments, your thoughts, but if you are doing a promotion and it's for a booking, then obviously you want to make sure that you're, you know, telling people how to go ahead and, and book or how to take it, how to enter into a, you know, a, a contest, whatever the case may be, but make sure that you're always including that in your captions as well. All right. That's a great summary of captions. I'm going to finish off um, with hashtags because this is another element that usually goes at the end of the captions that people always struggle with. You know, what hashtags should I be using? How many should I be using? You know, how should I be doing it? And the reality is that hashtags is, a concept that's really evolved a lot over the years. And it used to be, if we go back even, let's say, two years plus, that you needed to drop 30 hashtags on every single post, a range of you know pretty much everything from location-based to service-based to category-based um, captions to just try to get as much attention and exposure as possible. The reality is, and this has come directly from the CEO of Instagram, that hashtags are much less important within the Instagram algorithm today because Instagram has changed how they show people content. And people are spending a lot more time on the, the main discover page because Instagram has essentially adapted and is showing people naturally more content that's interesting to them. And therefore people are searching less and less than they were in the past. But hashtags as a definition is basically a search feature. So people can go into the search bar and search for hashtags. And in today's context of hashtags, really the only ones that you, you know might wanna focus on is something very specific to almost think of it like a Google search, right? Like what people might be searching for if they're looking for something very specific, are they looking for a stylist in, you know, whatever city or, or neighborhood or town uh, that you're in? Are they looking for a specific service? They want to see, you know, hair extensions or wedding hair or balayage in again, a specific location. So you can think about adding a few of those, but really you don't need more than like three to five these days uh, and actually having hashtag stuffing as they would call it, like putting uh, you know 30 hashtags is actually now seemingly reducing the impact and Instagram is actually uh, not promoting those posts like it did in the past. So um, you can really kind of scale down your the time and, and attention that you put to hashtags kind of keep some main ones that are focused on something that someone might actually search for and think of it like a Google search. That would be the best advice. Um, as we stand today, again, this can all change uh, as they often do. So we were kind of in spring 2023 right now. That's the latest and greatest as it pertains to hashtags. Sarah, for anything sure. to add to our uh, our discussion here today? I was just going to say with hashtags, um, yeah, again, keeping them very like location based kind of thing seems to be um, the move. And then also like if you happen to have like a custom branded one. So for example, at uh, my salon, we're called Chalk Salon and our custom branded hashtag is Get Chalked. So then people can look up Get Chalked and it will have all our work on there as well, too. So sometimes it's cute to, you know, include something like that as well. Um, but something that I would suggest to do just to save yourself a little bit of time and energy is I was just in my notepad have my pre-written out list of hashtags so then I can just go and copy and paste it right into the caption so whether you have you know a couple different groupings based on what type of post you're posting but instead of having to write them out every single time 
Um, I just find, yeah, making it as easy as possible in the actual moment will actually make me do it. So just a little tidbit of advice that um, has worked for me, just having them, you know, always set up to easily copy and paste. Love it. Well, hopefully everyone has uh, has learned something today. You now have a bit of a, a cheat sheet. Uh, when it comes to captions and hashtags, we try to cover off, you know, all of the real uh, the real basics of what you need to know about these two important elements. Uh, although, like we said, hashtags are, are decreasing in uh, in importance. But we challenge you now to make them a larger part of what you do. Really focus in on on your captions as a in integral part of your uh, of your post. And you know what, if you're sick and tired of social media and it's it's too much for you, uh, just know that that we, Salon SOS, are here for you. We do have a service where we manage social media content writing for salons um, and stylists, estheticians. So if that's something you just want off your plate completely, feel free to reach out to us and we can talk about how we can support you in that uh, endeavor. In the meantime, we can't wait to see what you guys come up with uh, in your future salon post. We encourage you to tag us on social media at salon.s.o.s and we look forward to seeing all your great posts and catching you on our next episode.